Hey coach, welcome back to the channel. If you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to stay up to date with all the latest content that we put out. At this point, we've pretty much got uh, content going out every 24 hours. So make sure you subscribe and don't stay stuck with your training business. So today I want to share with you three ways that you can start a soccer training business with little or no money. Now, this was something that I did at the beginning of my business, right? Now, for those that don't know my story, I decided to leave my full-time job to go and start my own a soccer training business. Now, at the time, it was a massive risk because I was leaving a steady monthly paycheck that ultimately when you're starting your business from from scratch which i was pretty much doing you know i didn't have that income coming in every single month so i went from a paycheck a steady income to pretty much zero very quickly now for most people most people watching uh, they would say to me right you are crazy why would you do that um but there's a couple of reasons why i decided to do that number one was because I felt that if I put myself in that situation, yes, I went through a lot of stress. Yes, there was a lot of sleepless nights. But I knew that in, the, in my heart that if I didn't take that approach, then I wouldn't act with urgency. So I, I wouldn't wake up every single morning with, with an urgency to go and find clients to start making money and and grow and start the business so i had to do that because i felt that if i you know i could have gone and got another full-time job and and built my business as like a side hustle but i knew that the requirements of what a full-time job requires right a full-time job it's a nine to five for most part it's a lot of commitment it always is a priority because it's it's what you're committing to the most uh, for most hours during the week and i knew that if i went down that that route and i focused on my business as a side hustle to begin with i knew that in the long term it was going to stay as a side hustle and it would eventually grow at a very slower uh, speed than if i went all in on, on the business from, from the go. So that's what I essentially did. I left that full-time job. To be honest with you, I wasn't happy. A um, number of reasons. I wasn't happy being told what to do all the time by my manager. Um, I wasn't happy coaching 30 to 40 hours per week. I was, I was working for a coaching company. Um, I wasn't happy traveling uh, two to three hours for a one hour session okay so i didn't want to be on the road anymore and also something that really shifted me was i didn't want to work with uncommitted players okay and for the most part the way this company operated was they're very very focused on the numbers so it's like get everyone in um, and ultimately a lot of the kids that came in they weren't really a good fit they weren't players that actually wanted to be there. They didn't really buy into the, the company. Um, so I didn't enjoy what I was doing. So that, that really shifted me to take a step back, analyze what I'm doing currently and make a decision that, right, I, I can't continue doing this because I, one, I'm not happy. Two, I'm waking up with a massive headache thinking, right, I've got to go to work. I've got to work with these kids. It's, you know, I don't want to do that. So I said, no, I said, right, I'm going to leave my full time job. I'm going to go all in on this, see how it goes. And ultimately it did pay off. And I was I was living on off my savings for pretty much three to four months. Uh, I was working with with clients at the time but they weren't paying me enough to actually do this like a full-time thing. So I was, I was pretty much living off my savings, making some, some, some little bit of money, but ultimately once it started to grow and scale, then that's when I went full-time and I, I, I was able 
to start to sleep a lot, a lot better. So what did I do at the beginning? It was very simple, right? The first thing I did was I learned sales. So I quickly realized that once I left my full-time job, that I also had some management experience in that job. So I knew that, right, if I was going to do this uh, on my own, I had to learn how to sell to parents, right? I, I had to learn how to market. So essentially what I did is I found the internet, right? The internet is free. Okay? Yes, you pay like a monthly subscription to, to have internet. But, you know, there's a lot of free information out there. And all I did was one, one hour per day, I'd sit down in front of my computer and I would just study sales. I would study how to, how to sell, how to talk to parents, how to create my program. And what I started to do is basically I, what I was selling was a free trial session. Okay. So it was more like a taster session that I was trying to sell to parents to get them to train with me, try it, and then hopefully then, then convert them into a, a paying customer. So I used all the sales information that I was learning online. I did it to create a sales process. So the process was essentially, what would I say when I was in front of a parent? How would I structure the conversation? What questions would I ask them about their child? And how would I transition that, that bit into then telling them about what I'm currently doing and then hopefully closing them onto a, a free trial session with me. So I spent a long time doing that to the point where I had a process down that I felt really comfortable with. And once I felt comfortable, I went out there and I put myself in front of parents. And this takes me on to the second thing that the second thing I did right? I went to my local parks. Okay. So once I had my sales process in place, I did a really thorough research on my local area. And essentially what the research was, it was, it was basically focusing on where are parents, right? Where, where do kids and parents hang out that I can go get in front of them and tell them about what I'm doing and how I want to help their, their, their child. So what I had in, in my local area, I had a, a park, right? And something I realized is Saturday and Sunday, that park was packed full of families. And it was mainly packed because there were, there were uh, soccer games going on uh, from the morning un until the afternoon. So I realized that, right, I had, there were three games going on Saturday. There was three games going on on Sunday. And then, and I did a little bit of research and I figured out, right, that's about 90 families per weekend I can go and get in front of. All right. So what I did is I role played in front of the mirror, how I would approach a parent. Then after I did that, the weekends arrived, I went out to, to, to watch the games and I would literally talk to every parent on the sideline. I would ask them questions about who your child is, how are they doing this season, what what things are they struggling with, and then what I started to notice: some parents were very um, very guarded against me, so they didn't want to express too much. And there was other parents that were very open to my conversation. So what I started to notice: I started to filter out the parents that maybe didn't trust me as much. And then the parents that were, were more open with me, then I then shifted the conversation into telling them what I was doing. And then with time, once I was doing that every single weekend, and I remember I did that for, for about four to five weekends straight, right? Every single weekend, rain, shine, snow. And um, whenever there was, there was matches going on, I was there. I was talking to parents, engaging with them. And once they started to build trust with me, then they, they felt confident enough to give me their, their phone number. And when I got home, I sent them a text message and I invited them to a free 
uh, training session with me. So after doing that for such a consistent period of time, it got to a point where I was adding two to three new players for for trial sessions in in my program. Okay, and then with time, those clients, well, those players, those families, then became clients of my program, and I managed to to close them into a long term term commitment with me. Right, so the first one, I learned sales, okay, I grabbed all the free information that's online out there, I read blogs, I signed up to free set, uh, webinars, I followed um, like these sales gurus that you have online, I made notes of, of what they were saying, how they were saying, how they were teaching, how they were approaching, um, I then created my own sales process so that I can use it to go and close, try and close parents into coming with, on a free uh, trial session with me. Okay, that cost me no money at all. I gained so much knowledge, so much education. Cost me no money. All that it required was a little bit of commitment and some time to learn and commit to it every single day. Once I did that, I felt confident enough to now, right, let's get go and get in front of parents. I went to my local park and I did that for five months straight. Okay, every single Saturday and Sunday I was there, I was talking to parents, I was engaging, and I managed to close some of them on coming to a free trial session with me. Okay. So once I started to get clientele, once my company started to grow and I started to get a name out there, parents started to know who I was, what I was doing, and they started to know my, my brand. Okay. The third thing I did was essentially I had to change my lifestyle now. And this doesn't require money, but it requires a lot of discipline. So something I realized that once I left my full-time job, Okay, I was leaving behind not just a paycheck, but I was leaving behind structure as well. Okay, because I was so used to going to bed at a certain time, waking up at a certain time, being at work for a certain time, that suddenly, you know, I didn't have to do that anymore. And suddenly it was down to me to organize my own day. And this is something that a lot of coaches struggle with because when they're given a free ownership of their day, they don't know what to do in order to be productive. So what I did is essentially I built a daily planner and I planned out my hours during the day, hour by hour, right? What time was I waking up? What time was I having breakfast? What time was I having lunch? What time was I writing my blog? What time was I recording a video to, to post on social media? What time was I texting a parent? What time was I writing um, e email newsletters, right? What time was I going out and, and talking to parents? Right, everything was so structured that ultimately, because I was putting so much time and energy into it, it started to grow. Okay, Because if you put energy and effort into something over a long period of time and you do it consistently, it will start to grow. Okay, So I had to get rid of a few things. Right, So I didn't see friends for a while. Okay, because that was the decision I made. I didn't want any distractions. I wanted to stay honed in on what I was doing. Um, I didn't watch uh, soccer, soccer matches. Like That's something I love to do in my, in my free time. If I'm not coaching, I'm watching. Okay, But what I noticed is that watching consumes a lot of time. So I got rid of that. I didn't watch a game for, for about a month and a half. Okay, until I, I said to myself, right, I need to I need to do this, stay locked in on this. This needs to be my number one focus. And once I'm starting to get results, then I can compensate myself, right? I can pay myself uh, with watching a match or going out with friends or spending money on a meal. You know, I wasn't even going out and, and buying meals anymore. I was everything was being done. I was cooking, I was budgeting. Right. I really, really this this became my life. OK, this became my life. It became a lifestyle. And essentially, with time, it started to grow. Right. One client became three. Three clients became six. Six clients then became ten. And it, would, it grew and grew to the, to the point where I built a system in that 
you know, today that system works very simple and it's a system I use with every single client when I onboard them into my program. Okay. So if you need more help with this, right, I know a lot of coaches are in the starting phase of their business. They want to grow. They don't want to spend a lot of money, but I've just shared with you three things that I did. It got me results and I spent zero or very little money doing it. Okay. So if you need more help or you want to speak with me over a free 15 to 20 minute call, then go to the description in this video. You can book a call with me. I talk with coaches every single day. I message coaches every day, right? I'm very active and this is pretty much something I'm, I'm doing full time at the moment. Okay. So get in contact with me. Love to speak with you. Love to connect with you. See where you are, see where you, where you want to get to and hopefully share with you some actionable steps that you can take this week to grow and scale your business, right? Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Thank you.